San Francisco 911 Heroes Award Ceremony. And it's presented today by the San Francisco Department of Emergency Management and 911 for Kids. My name's Elise Kim. I'm with 911 for Kids Public Education. And uh, just so you all know, 911 is the universal emergency response number uh, when we need help. And uh, it is used in the US, Canada, and Cayman Islands. In other countries, they use different numbers. Um, but um, the 911 for Kids program was uh, created in 1990 in response to the alarming number of calls that were not emergencies and um, with the whole purpose of trying to reduce 911 misuse. And uh, we're really thrilled with, with the program and uh, how we work collaboratively with public safety all over the nation. And the city of San Francisco is just an exemplary, exemplary program in public education. Uh, now it is my pleasure to introduce today's Masters of Ceremony. He is a legendary Los Angeles and Oakland Raiders wide receiver, the 1987 Heisman Trophy winner from Notre Dame, and uh, he is the national chairman of 911 for Kids. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome number 81, Tim Brown. Thank you very much, Elise. She left out number 81 in your program, but number one in your heart. She left that part out. So <laughs> uh, it is an absolute pleasure to be here today. Uh, we are here to recognize two outstanding 911 youth heroes and four incredible 911 dispatch heroes. These exemplary youngsters acted with bravery and confidence in an emergency crisis situation and helped to save the lives of their loved ones. Our four 911 dispatch heroes work behind the scenes in cooperation with law enforcement, fire, and emergency medical response. The men and women who answer these calls each day are the f true first responders when a disaster or emergency strikes, which can often make the difference between life and death for people in need. They are truly real heroes. Please join me in welcoming the Deputy Director from San Francisco Department of Emergency Management, Ms. Lisa Hoffman. Lisa? Thank you, Tim, and thank you, Elise and Kelly from 911 for Kids. Every year they make this a successful ceremony for us in honoring children heroes and dispatchers who are really the, the people that make it happen for, to save other people's lives. Hold on, I have to find my glasses, sorry. <laughs> They made the font really big, unfortunately. My eyes are still really small. So thank you all for joining us here today. The Department of Emergency Management is so pleased to partner again with 911 for Kids in honoring our dispatchers and youth heroes. This event marks the third year in a row that we've teamed up to present awards. We are also extremely happy to recognize in the audience Supervisor John Avalos and Ann Cronenberg, our Deputy Director, or excuse me, our Executive Director from our Department of Emergency Management, and Paul Henderson from the Mayor's Office. Thank you so much for being here today. These VIPs that are up here on the, the stage are going to be presenting awards to our heroes and honorees. As the public safety answering point for fi police, fire, and emergency medical services, the 911 Center in San Francisco processes approximately a million one hundred thousand calls per year. Um, we're the first agency in the state of California to accept our own wireless 911 calls, and we've done so successfully for 12 years. 75% of all the calls that we receive now are from cell phones, so it's really important that you train your kids and your family members to know how to dial 911 from a cell phone. And if they speak a language other than English, to preface that, call for help by saying what dialect or language they speak. We can translate languages in up to 173 different languages. So if somebody you know or love dials 911 and they don't know how to speak English fluently or that's not their first language, please tell them to give us the dialect and we'll be able to connect them with somebody who can speak their language as quickly as possible. It's now my pleasure to present today's first 911 hero, Tala Rahal. Tala, if you'll please come up. And we have Supervisor John Avalos from District 11 here to present Tala with her award. And Supervisor, if you want to come read this, and then I'll play an audio clip. Great. Uh, it's really uh, wonderful to be invited here to honor this young person, uh, Tala Rahal. On October 25th at 8.25 p.m., 10-year-old Tala Rahal 
called 911 requesting a medical response for her mother who was having a severe headache, semi semi-conscious and shallow breathing. Tala's call for help was answered by public safety, dis safety dispatcher Edgar Velasco. Throughout their contact, Edgar provided assistance and compassion to her and her two young siblings. Edgar, Edgar gave assurances that help was on the way and reminded Tala that she was doing a great job helping her mother. Together, Edgar and Tala worked to help ensure a successful outcome to this medical emergency. Let's take a moment to listen to a brief segment of Tala's 911 call. And I'd like to invite Edgar to come up on stage, please, too. Edgar, sorry about that. Come on up, Edgar. The Hi, it's Highway Patrol. I have a transfer. I have Paula. She's 10 years old. Okay. Um, she needs an ambulance for her mom. We're in apartment A. Oh, apartment A. Sorry. Apartment A. Okay. Paula? Paula? Yes? Hi, I'm Dispatcher Velasco. I'm going to stay in the line with you until the ambulance gets there, okay? Okay, okay. but could we... Is it okay if we go with her? Yes, you can. Yeah, absolutely. You, you don't have to stay home. We're not, they're not going to leave you there, okay? Don't worry about that. What is the phone number you're calling us from? Now, Paula, we are on the way. They are driving to you right now, okay? So don't worry. What, uh, what's the problem with your mom? Tell me exactly what's happening. She's, she has a, a really bad headache, and she's really tired, and she was fasting today. Okay. She can't eat or drink anything. Okay, okay. I just see from the fasting. Just keep me on the line, okay? Is she still awake? So at this time, we'd like to invite Supervisor Avalos to present the certificates from his office and the Board of Supervisors, thank you very much for bringing those, to Tala and Edgar. Thank you, actually, I'm really choked up. Uh, just thinking about the poise and courage that Tala held on that call and just the great help she got from uh, 911 staff, Edgar Velasco. Uh, thank you so much for just being a great example for uh, city staff and for young people in the city. I have a certificate of honor I want to provide to each of you uh, from my office and signed by members of the Board of Supervisors. Uh, I'll do Tala first. So in recognition of your quick response to your family member's need, your ability to, to keep calm and help make you a 911 hero. Thank you very much for your wonderful courage. And for Edgar Velasco, in recognition of your expert assistance and compassion to those in need of help, thank you for providing calm assurances to encourage others. You are a true 911 hero. Thank you. And now we'd like to present the 911 for Heroes Awards to both Tala and Edgar. Supervisor Avalos, thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy day to come and join us. We know you've, you're tied up in budget meetings and we appreciate it. Thank you very much. All right, so um, I'd, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to please have you join me in welcoming Keontae Brown and Public Safety Dispatcher Kim Tuye. And on behalf of the Mayor's Office, Paul Henderson, Deputy Chief of Staff from Edward, Mayor Edwin M. Lee, 
presenting their awards on behalf of Martha Cohen, who's our supervisor for District 10. Thank you very much, Paul. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Wow, thank you guys all so much for coming out. It always makes me so happy when I see people from the community here in City Hall sharing in this public building. And it makes me especially proud when I look out and I hear the stories today and meet the people. I don't know if any of you guys uh, caught it this morning, but they were talking about the Hero Awards uh, today on NPR. And they were talking about the achievements that are happening right here in San Francisco. And to be able to look out and see the faces of the people that are the heroes that work and live amongst us, it, it really makes me proud and it really is what public service is about. It's, it's only exacerbated by the fact that we have city employees up here that have done such an outstanding job. And it makes me proud to be here and I'm happy to see all of you. So thank you for being here and welcome. Uh, so I am here and am pleased to present certificates of honor on behalf of Supervisor Malia Cohen, who is the elected supervisor in District 10, which is uh, the Bayview, which is my neighborhood where I grew up. Uh, and here, let me tell you a little bit about what we're celebrating. So on September 30th at 6.49 p.m., 11-year-old Keontae Brown called 911 and requested an ambulance for his mother, who was unconscious after being hit in the head by a falling object, fallen object. Keontae's 911 call was answered by a public safety dispatcher, Kim Tuye. Tuye. I said it right. <laughs> uh, during their call, Kim provided medical instruction, assistance, and most importantly, comfort and reassurance to Keontae. Together, Kim and Keontae worked to help ensure a successful outcome to the medical emergency. And so now we're going to listen to a little clip of that incident as well so you can hear just how things happened on that day. San Francisco 911 police fire medical. Hello, can you please call Mama? The room, the, the ceiling just fell on my mom. Where are you? I'm, I'm, What's your address, Cam? What happened? So the ceiling, um, like the bathroom. Mm -hmm. I don't know what happened, but the, like the ceiling just collapsed on us. Are you with your mom right now? Yeah. Can I talk to her? Is she able to talk to you at all? Hmm. I don't know. I'm just really scared. Okay. Uh, I, I need to ask you some questions. I'm going to stay on the phone with you. I just want to remind you guys that Keontae is 12 years old, and to have the wherewithal to stay calm during a situation like this and know exactly what to do, it was his real smart decision to get help that really made him a hero. I mean, that's such a big deal. At 12 years old, I know I was having a good day if I didn't hit my sister that day. So this is like, this is a big deal. So I just want to congratulate you in front of an audience. And I actually have with me commendations that I'd like to present. First to you, Keontae. Uh, and this is recognizing you as a hero for your extraordinary act extraordinary act of heroism on this 10th day of April, the year of 2013. I know you may have had to miss a little school to be here, but we are excited you're here and we welcome you as one of San Francisco's heroes. Thank you so much. Now hold this up so people can see the picture, Keanta. There you go. And I also want to recognize Kim for a very similar act of taking the phone call and working with this young person to help make sure that we had a positive outcome. And Keontae, your mother's here in the audience, if you just want to raise your hand. And here we go. We have a one extra audience member <laughs> because of Keontae. Uh, and so Kim, as the Ni San Francisco City 911 dispatch hero, this also is in recognition for your exemplary response while assisting a child in an emergency situation. It takes a lot of work to make sure that you understand, you get the information, and this is the best turnout that we could have expected. And it makes all of us proud that you're standing here and representing the very finest of San Francisco employees. Thank you very much. We also have medals for both of them as well.
Let's give them all a big round of applause. I'm back up. <laughs> All right. So now I have another certification and another uh, challenging opportunity for us. Am I pronouncing it correctly? She's right here. She's one of our guest speakers. Okay, right. The child is not here, but Patricia is. Because you know I will mess up the pronunciation in a minute. She's that beautiful lady. Patricia. Was that right? Yes. Come on up here, Patricia. Let's everybody get a look at you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I, you know. Mark, Mark, Mark Cucci. Mark Cucci. Mark Cucci. Okay. Patricia Marcucci. So let me tell you about what Patricia did for us, for the city. So on March 4th at 6.25 p.m., public safety dispatcher Patricia Marcucci Received, I'm just waiting for her to look at me mean, like, they said it wrong. Received a call from a 10-year-old boy named Jason. Now, he called 911 that day and reported his grandfather, who was having an asthma attack. During this call, Patricia provided Jason with medical instruction, with assistance, and most importantly, comfort and reassurance. There is an added level of difficulty for Patricia in that Jason was translating for adults who only spoke Chinese. So even under these difficult situations, Patricia and Jason worked collaboratively to help ensure a successful outcome. Unfortunately, Jason and his family were unable to join us today, but that's not gonna stop us from celebrating the fine work of this city employee and the job that she did that actually saved lives here in our city. So, we'll take a brief moment to hear this conversation, but what I want you to keep in mind is that this 10-year-old child is translating for adults who are in need of assistance that don't speak English at all. So, without further ado. Oh. Did he bleed fire or medical? A medical. What is the exact location of the emergency? Tuseta Avenue, wait, Tuseta? And Jennings. What's the Cusada, exact address? Coseta, Jennings, 180. My, my grandfather is, is uncomfortable. He is like having asthma or something. Okay, so he's having breathing problems? Yes, breathing problems. All right, thank you. And uh, stay on the phone with me, okay? Don't hang up. I'm going to go ahead and get a medic, but I need to know, uh, what is your name? Jason. Jason, okay, Jason, thank you for calling. Uh, are you with your grandfather? Yes, and my mother. And your mother's there too. How old is your grandfather? Seventy something. Okay. Is your does your mom speak English? Um, only a little. Okay, so a little bit. So he's in his seventies. You're with him now. Yes. And is he awake? Yes, he's awake. Okay, and he is breathing, correct? Yes. Jason, is he completely alert? Um. Com is he completely alert? Is he responding appropriately to you? Are you asking him questions? Is he answering you like he normally does? Let me check. Okay, good. Let me check. Okay, okay, okay go ahead. Um, he, 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 he can respond. He can or he cannot? He can. Okay, he is, but that's how he normally talks to you? Yes. Okay, good. All right, and is he having a hard time speaking? Let's celebrate that. So now I know that anybody of you that have worked with children in the past know how difficult it can be to speak to someone that you may not have met before on the phone with a 10 year old to try and keep them calm and actually get crucial and important information across to them and from them all at the same time. And that's really what we're talking about here today and that's what you heard on the call, which is why I think this is such a big and important deal. Um, so I actually have two certificates to present. One from the local 911 Heroes Award for Patricia. I want you to hold on to that, but because I'm just warming up because we've got more. I also have the certificate of honor from the Board of Supervisors, 
authorizing the execution of this certificate, certificate of honor and appreciation and public recognition of distinction and merit for outstanding service to a significant portion of the people in the city and county of San Francisco. So congratulations once again. We thank you so much for your work. You make all of us proud. <laughs> We're still not done. And we still have uh, a medal to present to Patricia as well. I'm back. All right, we have another honoree. So once again, I'd like to call up Dan Nguyen. Where's Dan? I already talked to Dan. There he is. Dan? All right, so this is Dan Nguyen. Now let me tell you a little bit about what Dan did. So on September 11th, at 4.57 p.m., public safety dispatcher Dan Nguyen received a call from a 14-year-old girl named Tanani, saying that she needed medical help for her mother. Dan quickly verified Tanani's address and her phone number and provided her with medical instructions. Dan stayed on the line with Tanani and kept reassuring her that help was on the way. Dan's compassionate tone and demeanor during his call helped Tanani both remain calm and assisted her in providing assistance to her mother. Unfortunately, Tanani and her family were unable to join us today, but we do have this fine public servant representing the good work of the city that we're going to celebrate. And we're gonna take another moment again to hear the tape play so we hear a little bit of his work and what we're celebrating. San Francisco 911. Hello. Hi, San Francisco 911. Do you have an emergency? Yes, my mom? Yes. Tanani Lloyd. Okay, Tanani, what's your phone number? Okay, is the bleeding stopped or is it still going? I'm not sure. I think it's still going. I'm feeling very tired. She's getting tired and a lot of pain, so. Okay, how old is the patient? What was that? How old is the patient? She's 36. Okay. Is she awake? I think he's about to go to sleep. Okay. Is her breathing completely normal? Yes. Okay. Is she completely alert? I'm not sure. Do you say yes, no, or you don't know? It's okay. Is she changing color? No. Okay. Does she have a history of heart problems? No. Okay. Does she have abdominal pain? Yes. Yes. Not a problem, okay? I'm sending the paramedics to help you now. Stay on the line and tell you exactly what to do next. No, don't let her have... Thank you, Dan. You, you know, one of the things that you should keep in mind is you heard them say that they receive over a million calls a year. Now, keep in mind that when these calls come in, Oftentimes, especially when you're talking about children, the only thing they know is to make that phone call. And so that entire situation has to be dealt with by these dispatchers who have to assess the, inf assess the situation and provide information, usually through that child, as you've seen today, to provide the assistance because they're the only ones that are around until help can get there. So that, that's really such a big deal. And that's part of the reason why we play you these calls. So you understand on the opposite side of that calls, Oftentimes when people call, this, this is their lifeline. This is the only person that is providing them with information, making an assessment, telling them what to do, calling for assistance, making a uh, determination as to who best can come and help with the situation. So it's such a big deal. We don't take these uh, lightly. And it's so impressive, the work that you all do on a daily basis. And it's even more impressive with the examples that we've seen today. So I just want to present the same commendation as a dispatcher award for our local hero to Dan Nguyen. Congratulations. 
and as well another certificate of honor for his fine work and for doing such a good job of representing his department. It really is the work that we all strive to achieve as public employees. So thank you again. And this certificate is from the Board of Supervisors, Dan Wynn. And one more, because we still got Tim's medal to give. I'd like to call the rest of the kids up to, and the dispatchers up to get a quick picture, but while we're doing that, I'd really like to thank Paul Henderson from the Mayor's Office for doing a fabulous job for us today. Thank you so much, Paul. You're wonderful. And I also want to thank the 911 for Kids, Supervisor John Avalos, and Supervisor Malia Cohen for their efforts to make this ceremony so effective and so wonderful today. Thank you all so very much.